Hi, and welcome to Sports Illustrated's Experts Corner. I'm Andy Staples, and I'm here with your college football preview. Who are the top candidates for the Heisman this year? The name on everybody's lips is Matt Barkley, USC's quarterback. He came back. Everybody thought he was going to go to the NFL. USC has a loaded team with a couple thousand yard receivers. But here's the problem with being the prohibitive favorite going into the season. You almost never win. So who really has a chance? We've got Monte Ball, the running back at Wisconsin. 39 touchdowns last year. He was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. DeAnthony Thomas, the running back from Oregon, is going to put up a ton of yards. He was tailor-made for this offense. Also, Denard Robinson at Michigan. Watch for him. Usually he comes out like gangbusters in the early season. He's going to play Alabama right off the bat. If he has a big game against Alabama, he's going to be on the radar. The problem is, he's got to play Alabama's defense. What freshman do you see turning heads this year? All right, Clint, here we go. First of all, let's start at quarterback, a guy who came out of you know, high school and won the job at Oklahoma State, Wes Lunt. He's going to make a big impact. Go down to Miami, where they've got Tracy Howard, a cornerback who was the, the cornerstone of their recruiting class last year. Miami had their issues in the secondary. Tracy Howard is one of the top corner recruits in the country. He has a chance to come in and play right away. Go to Georgia, where they've just dismissed Isaiah Crowell at running back. They're going to need some help from their younger guys. Keith Marshall, Todd Gurley, remember those names. Those are two freshman running backs. They might be counted upon to contribute immediately. They might be counted upon to contribute heavily immediately, depending on how things go. Staying at the running back position, let's go to Austin, Texas. Jonathan Gray was one of the most highly touted running backs in the class of 2012. He can join a couple of guys, Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron, who had fantastic freshman years last year. If those three guys can become the three-headed monster that Mac Brown wants them to be, Texas's offense could gain a lot of yards on the ground. And with the defense they're going to have, that could make them a pretty powerful bunch. What team has the biggest chance for a turnaround year? Brian, I think the, the team that could really turn things around this year is Tennessee. They went 5-7 and seven last year. They were 1-7 in the SEC. They lost to Kentucky for the first time in forever. Things were not looking good in Knoxville. But you look at that offense. You look at Tyler Bray at quarterback. You've got a healthy Justin Hunter at receiver. You've got Derek Rogers, who's the SEC's leading returning receiver. And then a JUCO transfer named Corderell Patterson, who's 6'4 and 225, and people are having trouble covering him over the summer. That's a pretty good looking offense. Now, granted, they're playing in the SEC. It's never easy in the SEC. But if that bunch can chuck the ball around a little bit, Tennessee might have a much better year this year. And we're going to go clear across the country to Pullman, Washington, where the Pirate Captain Mike Leach has set up shop at Washington State. Washington State finished last in the Pac-12 North last year, but it was a little bit deceiving. Paul Wolf didn't do a terrible job there. They were in a lot of games until their depth caught up with them. Mike Leach and his offensive system, which is extremely hard to prepare for, which scores a ton of points, might be the equalizer that lets them win some of those games, lets them stay in them and then go ahead and win them. So Washington State might be a surprise team in that, in that Pac-12 North. I don't think they're going to beat Oregon or Stanford in that division, but a respectable season is certainly a possibility. What are your BCS Bowl predictions? We'll start out in Miami at the Orange Bowl. I've got Florida State winning the ACC and West Virginia coming from the Big 12 as an at-large. That's going to be a great game if that actually happens. Florida State has a fantastic defense. West Virginia has that high-flying offense from, from Coach Dana Holgerson, quarterback Geno Smith, receiver Tavon Austin. You know they can score some points, especially if you saw last year's Orange Bowl when they scored 70 against Clemson. In the Fiesta Bowl, I've got Big 12 champ Oklahoma against Big East champ Louisville. Oklahoma has a lot coming back, and they could wind up in the national title picture this year. So I've got Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl against Charlie Strong's Louisville Cardinals from the Big East. Charlie Strong has been recruiting very well since he got to Louisville. I think this is the year they win the Big East. In the Rose Bowl, I've got a rematch. I've got Wisconsin winning its third straight Big Ten title and playing Oregon. It was a great game last year, and it's a game I think people would like to see again. In the Sugar Bowl, I've got LSU playing a virtual home game against Michigan State. LSU as an at-large, so I think you know where I'm going with, with this when we get to the national title game. And Michigan State also as an at-large out of the Big Ten. They will be fairly competitive with LSU because Michigan State has a defense that looks very much like an SEC defense. So of the Big Ten teams, they seem to be the one best built to compete against an elite SEC team. Well, let's get to the big one, the national title game in Miami, Alabama and USC. 
when you look at Alabama's roster, when you look at the elite players they have across the board, it is really hard to pick against them in any context because they've got a good quarterback in A.J. McCarron. They have a fantastic offensive line. Alabama's loaded. USC also loaded. They had a great offense coming back. Matt Barkley, presumptive favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Robert Woods and Marquise Lee, 2,000-yard receivers. Curtis McNeil, very good running back. Good offensive line ahead of them. Lots of athletes on defense. What do they do? When Penn State gets sanctioned and all his players become free agents, they add Penn State's best player. Silas Redd, who gained over 1,200 yards in 2011, jumps into that offense. He'll split carries with McNeil. And that offense is just going to be really hard to stop. Of the teams that Alabama could play, USC, provided they ha don't have any key injuries along the way, is the one that is best suited to beat them. It would be a phenomenal game. This would be something that would just break ratings records. And you never know. If I get it right, it might happen. Is there a BCS buster in the non-AQ conferences this year? I'm not sure, because the usual suspects have been elevated for the most part. Utah, the original BCS buster, is a Pac-12 school for the second year now. TCU is going into the Big 12 this year. That leaves Boise State, which has one more year before it becomes a Big East member, in the Mountain West as probably the best candidate. But Boise State lost Kellen Moore. They lost Doug Martin. They lost the core of what was an unbelievably good team. And to start things off, they've got to go to East Lansing, Michigan and play Michigan State, which is going to be fantastic this year. So the problem is, you've still got to go undefeated to be that BCS buster type team. I'm just not sure Boise State's going to be able to do that when they have to rebuild and they're opening at Michigan State. Otherwise, there just don't seem to be a lot of candidates out there. Is this the year that somebody finally snaps the SEC's winning streak in the BCS title game? You've got Alabama and LSU at the top of the SEC West. Both of those teams played for the national title last year. They bring back a ton. LSU brings back almost everybody. They don't bring back the quarterback, Jordan Jefferson, or the quarterback, Jarrett Lee, which seemed to be their biggest area of concern last year. They feel like Zach Mettenberger, who's coming in as a starter, will be better than either of those two guys, and that they'll be a better team than they were last year. Alabama, those guys know what it takes to win a national title. A lot of those guys have won two of them. Then you've got Arkansas. They had their drama, Bobby Petrino, ill-fated motorcycle ride, got fired. Now they bring in John L. Smith as the interim coach. But the thing is, they've still got Tyler Wilson throwing beautiful passes. They've still got Niall Davis running the ball. That team, if it can trip up Alabama or LSU in the regular season, could have a real shot at playing for the national title. Over in the SEC East, South Carolina and Georgia feel like they're just as good. So if one of those teams emerges from the East with one loss and goes into the SEC title game, there's a very good chance that that team could win and play for the national title. So who can beat them? USC and Oregon from the Pac-12, both I think will have great chances if they played an SEC team. Out of the Big Ten, I think Michigan State is the best built team to play in SEC school. The problem is I'm not sure they're the best team in the Big Ten. I still think that's Wisconsin. It's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. If Michigan State can get over that hump and win the Big Ten, and you get in a one-game situation with an SEC team, I think they got a shot. The other one that's a little off the radar is Texas. Texas's defense is going to be fantastic. Manny Diaz, their coordinator, is the hot coordinator this year. If a great head coaching job opens up, everybody's going to want to throw money at him. They've got fantastic players on defense. They return almost all their starters, and they're still young. They only really have two seniors in their, in their starting defense. But their offense has to be able to do something. It hasn't done anything in the past two years. If the three-headed running back combo of Malcolm Brown, Joe Bergeron, Jonathan Gray can do something behind that offensive line, they could be pretty dangerous because that would be the type of team that would be just like those elite SEC teams. But the problem is they've got to get past Oklahoma, TCU, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and that ain't going to be easy.